Over here, I have a bunch of shell myths that at one point I believed in, probably some of you still believe in. Today, I'm going to try and convince you that these things are, are not true and that you've been lied to on the internet, which is shocking. Okay, so the first myth I have here is ZSH is a new version of Bash. ZSH, ZSH, I'm Canadian, doesn't matter. ZSH is a new version of Bash. I believe this for a long time, uh, and that's not true. So I have the shell history here. Uh, if you look at this one right here, this is the Thompson shell. So this is the first shell for Unix, right, by Ken Thompson, uh, 1972. A few years later, we have the Born shell. So the Born shell you may have actually used. If you... Uh, jump into an Alpine container or something like that. It just says SH. That's the Born shell. Now, just because a shell says it's SH doesn't mean you're actually using the Born shell because a lot of times if you check the symlinks, SH is just symlink to bash. Uh, so, you know, be careful, <laughs> I guess. But uh, yeah, so the Born shell uh, came out there in 1976. So where's bash and where's ZSH? The Born shell, if you follow it down here, we get bash in I think 89, 90, around there, and ZSH down here. So ZSH is not a newer version of Bash. Uh, they both are descended from the same uh, shell, Born, the Born shell, which is a little weird to me because ZSH and Bash are so similar. So I have to guess that there's a little bit of copying homework going on here. Uh, but, you know, they aren't actually descended since ZSH is not actually a new version of Bash. It's also interesting to see that these things both came out in like 1990, around that time, which means that they're closer to the Thompson shell than they are to the current day. Uh, so neither one's exactly a new shell, right? They've been updated a lot, but they're they're pretty old. Okay, so now in this top right corner here, I have vanilla bash. Uh, and let me, let me prove that to you. So, okay, so I'm using bash. Over here, I have ZSH. And over here, I have bash, uh, but this bash is mine and it's a little bit modified. So ZSH has completions and bash doesn't. Okay, so what does that mean? This, this is kind of tricky. When people talk about completions, they mean a bunch of different things. They normally mean tab completion. They normally mean tab completion. So this vanilla bash, vanilla bash, here I am. I'm in USR bin. Uh, let me just go into the root directory here and then let's try CD tab so I had to hit tab twice, but I do have tab completion, but I'm not able to do anything with it. Now let's say I do CD E like that. Oh, so I do have some tab completion. CD capital E, nothing works. So I think that's what people mean when they say bash doesn't have completion. They mean it has worse bash or completion than ZSH. But now let's look at ZSH. So we'll go into the, the root directory here. Let's do CD. And uh, okay, this looks all right. But now I can actually, I can jump in here and uh, play around with these things, right? I can actually select them like this. So that's what people mean when they say ZSH has completion that Bash doesn't. It has completion where you can actually interact with the completions. My modified version of Bash isn't that nice, but uh, if I do CD, I get everything color highlighted like this. If I do capital H and hit tab, it can still find it for me. So Bash does have that option of being case insensitive uh, and uh, it can do a lot of great completion stuff. So Bash does out does like with a bit of modification, right? Um, have completion. It's just not as good as ZSH's completion because it's not interactive. Okay, the next one, people say ZSH has themes and uh, Bash doesn't. So uh, I know that Brody Robertson did a video on that. I'll, I'll try and remember to link that. Um, there's no such thing really as a theme. People are talking about your prompt and you can add colors to your prompt. And I guess it kind of feels like a theme. Um, but both Bash and ZSH have themes. Now, this vanilla um, prompt is, is pretty, pretty ugly right here, right? Like this is what it looks like. I don't know what directory I'm in, not a lot of color. Now, this Bash prompt, right? The one that I've stylized a little bit is actually pretty nice. It tells me the directory I'm in. If I go into a repo, so let's go into my dot .files repo, uh, dot .files, there we go. You can see which branch I'm on. So I can you can get it set up so that it knows about Git. Uh, if I type something incorrect, I can get it to uh, have a little crying cat like that, which is, I think, pretty cool. And ZSH also uh, has a nice prompt. So let's uh, 
go into our home directory here, and then I can, uh, you know, go into my dot files repo again, like that. There we go. Here's my dot files repo, and then it knows that I'm on master. Type something incorrect, and I can uh, get the same little cat here. Uh, there's a delay there because I'm trying something. There's this idea that you can, uh, if you type in an incorrect command, uh, your package manager can go out and look and see. Uh, is there a program that actually has that name and it'll tell you where to get it? I don't have that set up. I'm going to get rid of it. It's really annoying because I misspell things all the time. So ZSH has prompts, ba uh, prompt themes, right? Bash has prompt themes. Uh, if, if you really want to call them that, all you're doing is setting your prompt, right? That's all you're doing. And, you know, you can give it colors just like you would anything else. Um, but ZSH is a little bit better here because ZSH allows you, first of all, it has better integration with version control. So uh, with Bash, you actually have to do a little bit of a, it's not a hack, but you have to have a function that figures out, okay, what the branch is uh, with Git and stuff like that. With ZSH, it knows about version control somehow. And another nice thing about ZSH is that uh, you can have prompts on the right-hand side. So you've seen this maybe, a prompt on the left and on the right. So maybe you'll have your Git status over here. I don't end up using that. I don't like it that much, but that is something that is different about ZSH. Okay, another, another myth is that Bash doesn't have plugins. So if you're using ZSH, I bet you the first time you installed it, you also installed something called Oh My ZSH, uh, Oh My Zosh, some people call it that. Um, and it has, a, it has a ton of plugins that you can use to do different cool things. Uh, and you know, people say ZSH has plugins, Bash doesn't, that's why I chose ZSH. So yes, Vanilla Bash doesn't come with any plugins, but neither does Vanilla ZSH. So what even is a plugin? A plugin is just a script uh, that your shell executes. So to say Bash doesn't have plugins doesn't really make sense because Bash has scripts. Now, ZSH probably has more plugins and people are more familiar with the plugins, but uh, it's not unique to ZSH, right? So obviously I don't have anything here, but uh, down over here, I've got uh, my plugin Z, so I can do Z code. It's gonna take me to my code directory no matter where I am. Uh, same thing over here, I can do that here. Similarly, I have uh, FCF uh, installed, so I can do Control R and I can uh, look through all this stuff and I can do the same thing here. These are both plugins, but really they're just scripts. There are actually a ton of differences between ZSH and Bash, uh, many of which I don't know. Uh, but, you know, for example, I think ZSH arrays start at one, Bashes don't. Uh, they start at zero. ZSH has global alias support. Bash technically doesn't, but there's a little hack where you can kind of get it working which is kind of cool. Um, but a big difference is that Bash uses a program called Readline. So if you want to get completions working in Bash, you don't end edit your uh, Bash RC, you edit your input RC. With ZSH, it uses its own program to read the command line. So uh, it's able to get around that stuff. So that's why with ZSH, you can get very, very cool things like syntax highlighting, right? So if I write Vim, it says, great, that's great, you found it. Vin, no, it's red, this is wrong. So I can see if I've typed something correctly or if I've typed something incorrectly, and that's pretty cool. And as far as I know, you can't do that with Bash. So which of these two do I prefer? I don't really care that much. I think that ZSH is probably a little bit nicer. Uh, I think Bash is fine. I'm gonna use ZSH for now because I like being able to see if I've typed something incorrectly but it really doesn't make too much of a difference. Okay, see you later, bye.